In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an easy and budget-friendly Neocaridina Shrimp Mini Pond. This mini pond is a cheap and effective way to breed shrimp in your home. Thank you so much for your time and I hope you enjoy watching this video. I recently won 15 golden back yellow shrimp in a giveaway hosted by the Aquatic Morning Show. I'd like to personally thank you guys for these little beauties. I can't wait to start a colony with them. When I received the shrimp, they all looked really happy and healthy. They were pretty lively in the bag. The temperature was about 74 degrees in the water and the TDS was about 220. I live in Illinois and it was about 30 degrees when they arrived, so good packaging. Included in the bag was a good mix of females and males and some of the most beautiful Christmas moths I've ever seen. I added a couple drops of Seachem Prime just to account for any ammonia that might be in the bag. I picked a little corner of my basement to put some mini ponds in and I hung an LED shop light above it. I like this area because there's some natural light that spills over from the walkout basement door. We'll be tearing down this toad on the right and setting it up for a shrimp breeding tank. So this means relocating some plants that I wanted to keep, taking the water out, and giving it a good clean before we set it up for the shrimp. The bin I'm using is called the Really Useful Box. It's a 32 liter or 8 gallon tote that I bought at Staples. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. Keep in mind there is cheaper options than this, but this is very sturdy and stackable. So if you ever decide to take your pond down, you can use it for storage. Actually, the blue ones are 25% off right now on Amazon. Just thought I'd let you know. Now it's time to clean out the tote with some clean dechlorinated tap water. It's super nice having a utility sink in the fish room. For neocaridina shrimp, using an inert substrate like gravel or sand is a great idea because you're not going to alter your water parameters. I like this Stony River black sand, uh, I just think it makes the colors of the shrimp pop. So I'm going to be using two bags of that. You could use aqua soil if you wanted to plant the tank, that's totally fine. Just remember that you might have ammonia spikes and a possible pH drop with that active substrate. Now it's time to fill up our mini pond with some osmosis water and then remineralize it. Keeping my water pump plugged into a smart outlet really helps out and is super convenient. I'm not walking 50 feet there and back every time to turn it on and off. Next I'll be adding a double sponge filter that's been in a mature system for a long time so it's got tons of beneficial bacteria on it. I like these style of filters because they have chambers for biological media. I did a video on the Higer version and besides the suction cups failing, I do really like these filters. My goal is to get this water up to a TDS of about 200. You can see right now it's at 42, so we're going to add some Seachem Equilibrium. What you doing, girl? The way I like to do this is by mixing the powder in a separate container and I just kind of eyeball the powder. I generally know about how much I need to add. There's different ways to measure it and uh, Seachem's got a good guide on their website for that if you're interested. Since this is a shrimp breeding setup, I want to provide as much surface area as possible so that biofilm and algae will form and it'll be a food source for the shrimp. This means I can take a piece of wood out of an existing aquascape and use it in my shrimp breeding pond. I was thinking about moving these pieces anyway to plant more plants in here, so it just kind of worked out. And I'd also like to mention that this surface is going to have some beneficial bacteria on it as well as a filter, so it kind of quick starts our tank. As long as I got my hands wet, I might as well grab some of this java fern too. Uh, this aquascape's kind of getting actually overgrown with java fern, so I can definitely spare some. I decided to grab one more piece of wood from this scape. Uh, both pieces have some bucephalandra on them, and it's not doing too well, so maybe it'll do better in my shrimp tank. Next item on our shopping list is some red root floaters from my overgrown 45P. Uh, these are just getting out of control anyway, so normally I throw these away, and at least now I get to put them in another scape. I can't 
came back to the mini pond, I found these two cheeky blue dream shrimp that must have made it into the pond via the filter. So, if you're going to use a filter like this, always check the tube, I guess. And as far as plants go, the easier the better. So, we're starting it off with some guppy grass. This grows really well and you can float this. Um, we also have some java fern. We're going to have some Christmas moss. And we'll have those two pieces of wood with the bucephalandra on them. You can see the boost is looking a little sad. I don't know if the angelfish were picking at it or if it was just getting too much light, but we'll see if it perks up in here. Next I arranged the pieces of wood and I actually shoved the java fern into little nooks and crannies in the tank just so that it could access the water column for nutrients. Speaking of nutrients, I really love Dennis Wong's two hour aquarist fertilizers. I use them in all of my tanks and I'm getting really good results with them. So if you're interested, there'll be a associate link in the description. Lastly, we'll put down some red root floaters. These will kind of help balance the tank out and remove excess nutrients from the water column. And uh, we don't really care if there's too many nutrients because we don't mind algae in the shrimp tank. It's actually good for the shrimp. So don't beat yourself up if you get a ton of algae. It's kind of the point. Algae and biofilm. Next, we'll go ahead and hang our specimen container on the side of the pond. And this will help us acclimate the shrimp. I think my absolute favorite thing about these boxes is the fact that it's impossible to overflow them. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So the way that I acclimate shrimp is I take an air valve and some airline tubing and I start a siphon and I do a drip acclimation overnight. So I generally do this when I'm going to bed and by the time I wake up they're acclimated and ready to get dumped in. The great thing about these hang on the side boxes is that the water level physically cannot go above the water level of the aquarium so you'll never flood your house with these. We'll check back in with these beauties in the morning. With neocaridina shrimp, you really should take your time and acclimate them slowly. I know a lot of people say they don't do this step, but I really like to drip acclimate my shrimp. I feel like it's just in your best interest and in their best interest. So now that we have them all acclimated, we're going to scoop them out with a net and put them in our new uh, breeding pond. You want to try to never put water from another aquarium or a store into your tank just because you don't know where that water came from, how clean it is, diseases, all that. So do your best to just scoop out the uh, fish and shrimp that you buy from your local stores. And last but not least, I have an oak leaf that I'm going to put in here. Uh, any kind of leaf litter like Indian almond leaves or oak leaves are great for shrimp because they're going to break down, uh, produce a lot of biofilm, and ultimately be a food source for the shrimp. Wow, look at these shrimp on this black substrate. They really pop and it's very easy to see them. So already I'm loving this pond. I can't wait to watch it grow in, but shrimp are looking really happy, really healthy, and they're starting to check out their new surroundings. And, as an added bonus, you can actually see through the side of the tank, which is really nice. I really like that. I should also mention that I don't run any heaters in my shrimp tanks. And that's not to say you can't. Of course you can. Uh, just keep in mind that the warmer you keep them, the faster they'll grow, but the faster that they'll die as well. I hope you enjoyed that video and maybe you learned a thing or two. I'm learning every day, and like I said, I'm still new at this, but love it with the burning passion and I try to share that with you guys so thank you so much for watching don't forget to check us out at sydneysangels.com where I sell some live fish that we breed in our house here and if you're interested in any of the products I use in this video I'll post some affiliate links down in the description the little way you can uh, help support the channel is by buying stuff from these links I love you all and I hope you guys have a great week we'll see you next weekend have a good one bye